Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I wanted to have a conversation about watercolor mediums, things you can add to watercolors to create different effects. If you enjoy this video, I can do another one that's about acrylic mediums or another one that's for oil painting mediums, but today I wanted to talk about watercolors because I enjoy them so much, and I think there's a few that maybe people don't realize exist that are super helpful and create unique things. So I'm gonna talk about some of them. This is the one I own. This is probably the one most people are familiar with. This is just basic masking fluid. And this is what you would add to a certain area. Like I could add the area on a blank page and then paint all around it. And once all around is dry, I could peel it up and then I can paint the nose and not worry about anything feathering or blending into itself. So this is a removable masking fluid. Now, another product you could use for watercolor is permanent masking fluid. And Winsor Newton makes that as well. I will link in the description box all the different companies that make these different fluids so you can choose. You could read reviews and just maybe there are certain companies you like more than others. But permanent masking fluid is actually different than regular masking fluid in that you cannot remove it. So it's transparent. So what you would do is you could apply it to a certain area, like I could apply it all around here. And then if any of my paint tried to get on this area, it would repel it and it wouldn't stick. Or I could mix it with my paint and apply it directly as like say the color of the eye and then if any other of my paint got on top of that it wouldn't stick. The thing about permanent masking fluid is you have to wait for it to dry if you're mixing it in with your paint otherwise you won't get the effect you want in protecting that and if you're mixing it in paint it's often easier to use it with tube paint. Um, one of my favorite watercolor mediums is called watercolor ground. Um, Daniel Smith probably makes the funnest watercolor ground in that it's not just white or transparent. They make it in black, gold, and kind of a mm, buff color. That's what they call it. Anyway, but this is so if you want to watercolor on something other than paper, let's say you have a piece of plastic or metal or sort of wood surfaces, glass, you would paint the watercolor ground on and then you could watercolor on top of that once it dries. So if you want to watercolor your shoes or a sign, you could. Watercolor ground's a lot of fun. Um, another product that Winsor Newton also makes would be uh, lifting preparation. So if you're just starting out and maybe um, you're still building confidence in your creating and watercolors. Lifting preparation is used for correction. So what you would do is you would wait for your painting to dry and then you would take it and put it on a wet brush and it would actually help you lift the paint off the paper better. So if there's something you absolutely hate, if something just doesn't look right or you want to take it off your page, using lifting preparation would be the most effective way to remove the most amount of paint possible. Now some paint is highly staining and there isn't a lot you can do, but it's better than nothing. Um, another really cool uh, watercolor medium would be like Aquapasto or Impasto gel. And Schminka actually makes a nice one. Um, and this gel actually helps you create texture and add extra gloss. So if I wanted kind of a cool 3D effect with this ostrich's eyes, I could mix that with the paint and then apply it to the surface like that, or I could apply it on top of something I've already painted with like a palette knife. There's two ways you can kind of use that. And that would create, you know, gloss and a little texture and that would be really, really neat. Um, another product Winsor Newton makes is called Texture Medium. And this actually contains the really small, minute particles to add depth and structure when mixed with paint. So 
you would kind of want to mix it with a tube. Tube is probably easiest with most of this stuff. And then you would apply it to the paper and it would just add a little bit more depth effect. If let's say I wanted the eyes to kind of pop out, texture medium would be great for that. Uh, another medium is called granulating medium. So I talk a lot about granulating watercolors that have different particle sizes and they kind of split and break apart. If you wanted to experiment with that and you don't own granulating watercolors or certain colors from certain companies that granulate more than others, you could buy granulating medium, which Winsor Newton also makes. And it gives that sort of mottled appearance you dilute it with the paint, mix it with the medium, and then bef before applying it to the page. So you would mix it in with your paint and then apply. And that's the easiest way to use granulating medium. Um, gum Arabic, which is a binder for uh, lots of paints, you can buy that in a solution and it gives you more control over your wet on wet techniques. Adding more gum arabic actually slows the drying time of the painting. Um, Dabbler Rowley makes a really, really nice one. But if you want to have more control, let's say you're transitioning from oil painting where it takes a really long time to dry and you want to try watercolor but it's moving too quickly, add gum arabic and it'll slow it down. So Oxgall, which Holbein makes a really nice one, um, is a wetting agent that you can enhance your wet on wet techniques. So this actually makes the paper more receptive to the pigment. So if you really want to show your um, adding wet pigment to already wet paper and you really want it to feather and you really want it to spread out, adding oxgall is a really nice way to do that. Um, opalescent medium, this is a fun one. Um, this adds sort of a iridescent and it, well, opalescent medium just, it, it increases the transparency and brightens the paint. So it helps adhere the paint to the paper. So if I really wanted these muted colors to be brighter and I really want to see the page a little bit more through this uh, painting of an ostrich, I would add opalescent medium which is not the same as iridescent medium. Iridescent medium is the one that adds the glittery effect. So if you are painting something, I don't know, for a wedding or a birthday, and you really want it to sparkle and shine and give that glitter effect, you can mix it directly in with your wet paint, or you can finish your painting and you can add it on top. So if I wanted these eyeballs to sparkle like glitter, and my painting's all done, I could add a thin layer of iridescent medium on top and that would give that effect. I hope this video helps. I hope this is a good reference for you in case you were wondering what all the different watercolor mediums and options are out there that create kind of different effects. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye!